So we bought our first ever narrowboat last year without a survey and it turned up with a great humongous leap. A year later and we're still picking up the bloody pieces. But we've accepted responsibility and we're locked into this lifestyle now, guys. Whatever gets thrown at us, we're gonna tackle head on. So currently what you're seeing here is us a few days into a week journey up to March from Eton Soken to get our hole blacked and to finally have the survey on the bloody vessel. So we've just left Ely on the Great River Ooze, I think that's right, and we are nervously heading to Denver Sluice. Well. I'm nervous, Becca's fine. But let's face it, she's the one with the degree in marine biology. I'm the one with the degree in letting her do all the work. <laughs> no, it's not really like that, but it may look like that sometimes. Anyway, in with a bang with this episode, guys. Here's Denver Sluice. That terrifying tidal Denver Sluice. It may look daunting, but it's not actually the problem. The problem is this tidal area here leading into the lock where uh, boats have been known to be pulled out by the current. And Denver is also roughly halfway, or maybe a little bit over halfway, of where we're trying to get to up in March. Health and safety first, always sanitise. That's what me old boss used to say. Here's the new boss. You all right? There's a couple of boats waiting to come in from that way. Yeah, lock keeper said he's going to be with us in half an hour. Crowbot are eager and keen to get through, aren't we, to the tidal section. And there's a funny old turn which can sort of manoeuvre the boat away from the lock, which we worried about last time, but we were fine last time, weren't we? Just going to have a look. So we are currently over here. You can see Becca messing around with the old wombat. She's going to wave. And where we're going to go is through this giant contraption and up towards this way. So yeah, we go through this large contraption area here, which is Denver Sluice, the large manned lock. We do not go left, we go straight on. I think where the little house is, at the end there, is where we turn in left, where it sort of can be a bit fiddly. So I think it will, it will probably go really smoothly today, to be honest. Going in is harder than out, and we're going in this time for the first time, so. Watch this space. <laughs> so the area being oh, so the area being tidal, you've got to wait for certain time slots in the day for the tide to be at the right point so you can actually get your boat through or you'll get stuck. And by what I hear, every day it seems to go up by an hour. So one day it could have been sort of eight o'clock, the next day nine o'clock, the next day uh, so at 10 o'clock today, it's 11 o'clock, so. And we were actually here a whole 45 minutes before the lock even opened. But by doing so, an other two boats turned up and they had nowhere to moor, so we kindly sort of let them moor up next to us. Let two boats go in front of us. It's how crowbot roll. I can't say I'm happy about it. There was one <laughs> moored up next to us because there wasn't a lot of uh, room on the landing spot here. And one at the front. They're going separately in here so that they can shoot over the tidal area and straight into... Uh, salt as load, but you yeah, cannot say I'm happy about it. Are you happy about it? Yeah, I'm easy breezy. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> I'm obviously just joking, guys. Yeah. All goes smoothly. Lovely. Yeah, 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 yeah good. Fine. All right. I'm right. worried about it. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, I always worry with this one. <laughs> So finally it's our turn and for those that remember my awesome little 360 camera that I've got I was a bit annoyed because I put it on the front of the boat but the bloody battery went from where I've been using it on this whole sort of getaway so you're gonna have to put up with just the Becca cam. Is that all right guys? <laughs> I'm sure you're more than happy to have the Becca cam instead of the Chris cam. Be careful what you wish for guys because slowly that Becca cam can become a Chrissy can. Here we go again. But because Becca had driven through Salter's load previously when we picked the boat up a year ago, she thought it was only fair that I have a little go at it, driving it in this time, because this is the tidal bit, and I was a little bit nervous last time. You know, she just wanted to let me have a little blast at it to see how I get on. And this here is the area where the uh, other boat got pulled out, and unfortunately, like I say, I've only got this back camera. But, um, yeah, we're doing all right so far, aren't we? My uh, panicky actions start to take place. Her work is done. 
and my panicky behaviour continued. <laughs> Sorted, and we're off, guys. So, not the best spot to moor up, loads of traffic right now, but we did moor on here last time, and it was really peaceful and quiet. Down into the little nest. And then you fall over as well, like that. So, yeah, just try not to fall over. <laughs> it's one of my favourite little mooring spots just outside Salter's Load Lock, guys, just down from Upwell. There's just enough space for one narrowboat, and you get your own cool little pontoon and table area. So I think we're about three and a half hours away from the designated location. That is March Fox's Marina for our blacking and boat survey. But it is, it's Tuesday at the moment, about two o'clock-ish. And we don't need to be there till Thursday morning at eight. So I think we're gonna go up for a, an hour and a half or so and uh, just see if there's somewhere to moor up a bit further, just for a bit of fun really. Good wait around here, which is like really peaceful and nice, but you've got to explore a bit, haven't you? God, it's bloody windy. <laughs> what are you doing? Turning the inverter on. So yeah, we get the inverter on, and then we get all our little bits like battery chargers for the camera and the fridge going and all that stuff, really. You know that anyway, don't you? It seemed like a good idea at the time. My God, it was bloody windy. Okay. You'll need to give it a push. What was happening here is the force from the wind was pushing the boat over to the left here. As much as we pushed or steered, front end was just heading straight into all the foliage and weeds. The worry with this is that we won't be able to get it back and we might sort of get stranded in this stupid little weed patch. I mean, I wanted to stop. Becca wanted to keep going. Wait a bit. Becca. Bex. Maybe we should stop. A lot of wind, guys. In the end, I got my way. Yeah, there was no way that boat was moving at the moment. That was unsuccessful, wasn't it? Really windy. We kept going into the marshland at the front of the boat. I mean, that says it all, really, did it? <laughs> we kept going into here, didn't we? So windy, it's like pushing you over. I'm sure once you get going, you're probably all right and you've got a bit of momentum. Let's see what the, uh, the weather's like a bit later. And tomorrow, maybe. We're only three and a half hours away. We could, we've got plenty of time, really. We can even go through the night if we need to. <laughs> Anticlimatic, is that the right word? A few hours later, round two. Okay, second try, it's still a bit windy. It's probably exactly the same, isn't it? But I mean, it's not this. It's hardly like extreme weather conditions, is it? No, and well, we've got a different tactic we're gonna try. So, yeah. bear with us, let's see what happens. What's the tactic? I mean, it, it was pretty much just as windy as it was before, but I think we just sort of got a bit of morale back and just went for it. Drizzle and drive, guys, that's how we roll. We've lost one of our fenders. Either that or it's hanging on. Looks gone to me. 
So, enter Outwell Village. It's absolutely lovely up here, guys. I think it's safe to say we are not the winners in this particular race. I mean, that's nothing. The other day, there were about 10 ducks that were overtaking us. So, yeah, get ready or get used to uh, living a slow, easy life. A slow, easy, unstressful life, eh? Yeah, right. Just come out of Outwell and try and find a little mooring somewhere just in the wilderness that we can sort of pull over on. That's what you're doing, it. I don't think there's any real sort of mooring places. But we've sort of got all this foliage everywhere, look. So, watch this space. So I found the first little spot where it looked like I could jump out and we could moor up for the night. The problem was, there was no way we were going to be able to moor up there for the night. I mean, it, apart from that tiny little area, the rest was just completely overgrown. I mean, you probably could have could have done if, if you had the heart, but I, I thought, let's get moving on a bit further and find somewhere a bit easier. Push off with the giant stick. It's round about half seven, eight-ish now, so it's getting dark. We're really going to need to find somewhere. Getting on a bit now. I need to try and find a spot to moor up if it will get past this, this little area. And we'll speed this little bit up, guys, because it just went on for bloody ever. I mean, it's a lovely wide river area, but, you know, we're in a rush to get moored up now. You can even see the sun going down. It's going to be getting dark soon. Night cruising, isn't it? Hope not. <laughs> not ready for that yet. Here we go, that's more like it guys. But these sort of areas, I warn you, are more prone to spiders. I do always wonder when the day comes that a farmer comes knocking on the window. But supposedly most of them are all right and the odd one might ask for like a fiver for the night. That is just what I've been told. I haven't experienced any of it. So yeah, don't take it from me. But me and Becca often think if you're respectful, you know, and you're only there sort of overnight and you clear off without leaving any rubbish, you know, no one's going to have a problem, are they? Oh God. We're coming again. So what are you cooking? I'm going to make like a sort of corned beef hash thing. Okay, so Becca has tra fully trained me now on how to turn the inverter on. You want to sit back and put a film on tonight. Inverter on, and then push this little fella. Move the old accessories down so we can sort of see how much juice we've got left in there. This will definitely let us know if we're using up too much. Some annoying alarm will go off and the red light will start blazing. So hopefully this should work. The butterfly effect tonight. Foot loose last night. There we go. So there's the sofa, aka the bed. And he's started already. He's off. He's already off. She's finally lost it. This lifestyle's finally caught up with her. Wow, lovely. Always tastes better when you when you when you're not doing it yourself. <laughs> when Becca does it. <laughs> so there we go. In the next episode, we shall be entering Fox's Marina for our survey and blacking and the alleged stern gland repacking. We've nearly made it, guys. Woohoo, no cliffhanger. So like and subscribe, smash that stupid little bell, and we'll catch you in the next one, guys.